I've been thinking recently that with the introduction of the Ashen Wind Skull, that Sea of Thieves has a lot of potential to expand the sandbox, without breaking the balance of the current four starting weapons. As a game that was designed to be a choose your own adventure, there aren't a whole lot of toys out to find in the environment. We have gunpowder kegs, rowboats and now the Ash and Wind Skull, but there's so much more potential. So here it is, 9 new tools to change the sandbox in Sea of Thieves. Now hear me out. All of these items have limited uses just like the Ash and Wind Skull, and the idea is that when you engage in PvP, you cannot predict what the enemy has. These items will have use in traversing the environment, or usable on AI threats too, and what better way to kick this list off than with a handheld cannon. This is heavily inspired by the Broadsider from the Fallout franchise. This essentially acts the same as the cannon from your ship, but you can pick it up and use it while walking around. You can load it with any ammo that goes in your ship cannons, so cannonballs, cursed cannonballs, chain shot, fire and blunder bombs are all available. The idea is that you have the ability to use these on land against AI and can use it around your ship. Well, it has to be balanced. The first downside is that likely you cannot sprint with it or fast swim. The range is significantly reduced compared to your main cannons and the cannon can only be loaded while not being held. You cannot change the ammo in it once you've loaded it. This would encourage crews to preload it for quick action, but once you put the ammo in, it needs to be deliberate. Oh, and it can only be used five times before it breaks. Alternatively, you can sell it to the Merchants Alliance or Reapers for a sum of gold, depending on the condition. I've made some lore for each of the items. Here's the lore for the handheld cannon. The Pirate Lord's loyal crewmate would slave away creating new inventions to benefit the crew of the Magpie's Wing, but couldn't quite perfect this cannon. Another blacksmith managed to get it working, albeit at the cost of the cannon's durability. The elephant gun was a big game hunting rifle that was used to hunch large animals like elephants and rhinos. The elephant gun fires a very large round known as the Nitro Express, however it would be more appropriate to fire a 4 bore or 2 bore round. Here's a picture for reference. The round is slow but generates an incredible amount of force which would mean the bullet drop is significant. The rifle would be found in random locations and can only fire 5 shots before breaking. Like the handheld cannon, it acts as a pickup and has all the drawbacks. Additionally, it takes a lot longer to reload and lacks the range and scope of the eye of reach. The aim down sight time is long and you cannot fire from the hip. However, if you can hit an enemy pirate, they will be dead in one shot. The idea is to have a reliable way to one shot but have a significant drawback. This would be incredibly useful in ship to ship combat, where if you can accurately shoot an enemy player, they are out of action instead of crunching on a banana. Anna. Here's the lore for it. It is said that Merrick's son, Derek, created this weapon in the hope to avenge his father, but lacks the range to hunt megalodons. Why did he call it an elephant gun then? Here's a new non-lethal tool to spice up movement around the Sea of Thieves. Here we have the hook shot. The hook shot will attach to any surface and pull you towards that surface, much like the ship mounted harpoons. If you shoot another player, they will be pulled towards you, same with any loot you manage to hit. The idea is that it increases ways to traverse the environment and offer new opportunities for boarding. The hookshot has infinite uses unless you hit a ship with it, then it only has three, to limit boarding abuse. Say you're on a vertical island like Crooked Masts or Old Faithful, you can use the hookshot to climb faster. The physics would be similar to the Pathfinder's grapple from Apex Legends, in which you can swing if you use the momentum correctly. Again, no sprinting or using weapons while using it, and you have to reload after each use. I think it would break open the ladder watching metal wide open, and would make these large to islands more fun to traverse. Here's the law of the hook shot. There was once an infamous pirate that collected so many hooks from their enemies that they ran out of space to store them, so they decided to make use of these grizzly trophies. The pirate was said to love wearing green and had bright blonde hair. This one is another weapon that is obtained from defeating a skeleton lord in a fort. This is essentially the arm of a defeated skeleton lord. It is a melee weapon that delivers a powerful knockback attack straight from the skeleton's arsenal. It requires a charge up to use, but upon releasing the charge, a burst of energy is let out and players are sent flying. It can also rock ships like an explosion. Again, it only has 5 uses and takes a few seconds to charge, but will be great for crowd control and boarding ships. Also, you can sell it to the Order of Souls for some gold, depending on how many uses it has left. This also inflicts no damage and is just a knockback tool. Here's a bit of thought on it. Nobody is sure as to what created the Skeleton Lords, maybe another curse created by the Ancients. But one thing is for sure, hitting your enemies with magic severed arms is a bit weird. Believe it or not, this was actually hinted at by a data mine from way back when the game was in beta, and actually hinted at the Boarding Axe, a potentially different melee weapon from just the sword. 
I have seen some great ideas for implementing this weapon on Twitter and Reddit, so let's steal them. Initially, the boarding axe will be a melee weapon that requires you to charge up a swing like a sword lunge. If you manage to hit an enemy, you can kill them instantly. You can't sprint, jump, or swim fast with the weapon due to its heavy weight and has a reduced range compared to the lunge. It has three uses before it breaks. Lastly, you can hit people through a sword combo and it cannot be blocked, but you also cannot block. Alternatively, it has a secondary function where you can pull planks off repaired hulls on ships, which will make a mighty racket and will definitely alert your enemies. This takes time like repairing, but will be rewarding if you can pull it off. This will add a layer of depth to melee combat, rather than just jumping around and spamming sword strikes, forcing players to rethink combat when the enemy can have two different melee weapons. Here's some lore about its implementation. A shipment of boarding axes were to be delivered to the Merchant Alliance some years ago, but the shipment was allegedly stolen by the legendary Three Sheets Neat. Recently, these axes have been washing up on the Sea of Thieves, albeit a bit damaged by the seas. This is the simplest new tool. It's like a gunpowder keg, but instead causes a widespread fire effect that can create fires on land and ships. It needs to be hand ignited to work, so shooting it will not cause the oil to ignite, but fire bombs will work. However, this will be less effective than a hand detonation. It does not cause the same explosive effect as the regular kegs. Here's some more lore for you. The warsmith originally wanted to use these barrels to set the seas ablaze in honor of her king, but I think she misunderstood what he was asking. This, on the surface, looks like an ordinary crate, but made out of metal. It acts as a regular crate, but you can only put cannonballs in it. However, here's where the usefulness comes in. Like a powder keg, you can set off a fuse, and when the 5 seconds is over, the crate is dropped out of your hands and slows down any ship it's on. The only way to defend against it is to drop it off the ship before the fuse burns out, or destroy it by shooting at it. The more cannibals you put in it, up to 50, the more strong it is and the more damage it can take before breaking. The crate is essentially a magic weight that can slow down pursuing pirates and is really aimed at the solo player who is used to running. It also opens up some cool sneaky plays where you can hide it on an enemy ship to prevent them from escaping. A relatively passive tool that costs resources to use and is both useful to pursuers and the pursued alike. As always, here's the lore. Before the pirate lord created the many cursed chests found across the seas, he tried creating weights that could be used as ballast, but were much too heavy to install on any ship. This is definitely the most tenuous one, where the crate has to be filled up with bait to work. The crate requires 50 pieces of bait to work, however, if you place the crate in the water, it will increase the likelihood of sharks spawning within a certain distance of the crate. Like the crate of weight, it needs to be activated and dropped in the water. You can stack the crates to increase the effect. This will be useful for defending your ship from tuckers when you're away from it, but has a relatively small radius. Also, if you happen to use too many in succession, it raises the risk of the Megalodon spawning, and as you attract it, it will only be aggressive towards you. Alternatively, you can place them around on an enemy ship and entice the Megalodon to attack them next time they set out on the open seas. Unfortunately, the Shrouded Ghost cannot be summoned this way, as, well, it doesn't exist. Here's some more lore for you. Merrick searched for the Hungering One for years after it devoured his crew and the Wailing Barnacle, and tried many times to lure it out of bait. Apparently sharks much prefer a good tune to smelly bait. Our final tool is a much requested one, and as simple as things go, a flare tool. It has a single use and can be used to alert other pirates to your location. This can be seen from a long way away, but not quite as far as events like the Skullfort or Flameheart fleets. And the last tidbit of lore, originally only thought to be possible through merfolk magic, Salty managed to replicate the flares used by them, for only a short concentrated burst. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, make sure you subscribe for some more Sea of Thieves content in the future. Thanks again for watching.